Okay. Okay, so we'd like to tell you a little bit about an experience from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities team uh, doing outreach while our balloons were in flight. We are one of the engineering teams. And so we're going to talk about two devices. One is in the background here. This is the Sunspotter Solar Telescope. And then this is Ashton's cell phone. He'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, here's our abstract. You can read that at your convenience. It's in the abstract booklet, of course. So here's part one. Um, I'm going to go immediately to this Google Drive, which is where we have a bunch of our documents posted, and just take a quick look at a few of them. The Sunspotter is a very easy to use telescope, and uh, here's just a picture of one of the people who was in our area taking a look through it. It's a triangular telescope, and it projects an image of the sun onto a piece of paper. So there is the disk of the sun, and there is the moon starting to cover the sun. Um, and it's so easy to use, and frankly, you can have multiple people looking into it at the same time. You don't have to line up and look through an eyepiece. So it's a very safe and uh, very useful device for essentially all ages. In fact, let me show you just a little tiny bit of, here's a video showing it going into, to, into annularity. Real time. How's the outside look? And then, of course, uh, it comes out of annularity. One more thing that's in this particular uh, set of slides here, I won't show this to you, is a two-minute approximately long demonstration video where I show this device in use and the fact that you can see sunspots with it. I encourage you to consider uh, getting one. Um, in fact, here are just some of the slides that I just showed you, and then here is where you can get them. They cost about $500, and often Fisher Scientific has them for less. Ashton. All right, so I'm here to talk about adding a solar filter to a cell phone. And so we did this for the purpose of streaming the video to an Instagram live stream on the MNSGC account for Minnesota. Unfortunately, this only seemed to work on an iPhone 15. We tried placing Eclipse glasses over a couple different phones from people on the team and the iPhone 15 Pro was the only one that seemed to get a good resolution of the sun. Um, it's worth mentioning that to get a, uh, I guess, focused view of the sun, it's better to zoom into the sun first and then try and focus your way through it. Um, one of the products that you could buy to pull this off is here and it's an Amazon Eclipse glass that has a circle over that will cover all three cameras on your phone or however many cameras but it's worth mentioning that you will want to cover the two cameras that are focused on getting close up view and far away or close up view and medium distance view with tape of some sort so that they don't try to automatically switch to that as this solar filter um, doesn't allow much light to go into the camera. Um, this can be pulled off with regular Eclipse glasses that were given out to all the NEBB teams. But again, make sure that you cover the other cameras so that they can get less light than the camera that's being filtered. Um, as I said before, this was posted at um, NASA underscore MNSGC for the University of Minnesota Instagram account. And this live stream lasted about an hour, and we were able to get footage that was about this quality throughout the whole eclipse. And then here is a link to the actual video. It's about an hour long, and you can um, visit this link with your camera or by clicking the link later. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have the second talk from St. Catherine University, who will be presenting. 